here. Um, I'm going to give you this one. One gallon is equal to 3.785 liters. And I'm going to give you um, uh, one more, which is uh, which one? Hmm? acres. None. If I give you a problem with acres, yes, I'll give that to you. And so the, the more obscure ones I, I give you. But, um, one pound is equal to 453.6 grams. Those are the two that I'm going to give you. All the other ones you're supposed to have memorized. The, the ones being this, like, but it's not everything because I'm not going to ask you um, certain things. Like uh, if I like acres, you know that one I don't expect anybody to know. But all the definitions I expect you to know. Now, what are all the definitions? Do you know what all the definitions are? All the definitions are going to be the exact conversion factors. And so, uh, like the question was, milli to to milliliter to liter. Yes, you're definitely going to have to have that one memorized because um, milliliter to liter. You know there are two ways you could do that. You could do 1,000 milliliters is equal to one liter, or you could do a milliliter is equal to um, one times 10 to the minus three liters. Something like that. But all these metric ones you need to know. So what were they again? They were, we, we'll start off with the smallest, which would be pico because of the atom size, and then nano. Yeah, milli. Then kilo, uh -huh, and then go in the opposite. So you need to know all those. Those are all exact. Um, and then you need to know one that doesn't look exact, but is exact. It's a very weird one. Which one is that? Inches to centimeters. This is the only one that's weird. One inch is 2.54 centimeters. That was a weird one, but the other ones, um, I'm going to expect that people know like there are 12 inches in a foot or, or et cetera. Those types of ones, you know, the standard ones. But how many ounces or how many inches in a mile? No, but you should be able to figure it out based on those. So, I mean, it'd be the standard ones. Um, nothing, I think, weird except 2.54 centimeters per inch. Uh-huh. Also, includes like Okay, no, only the definitions you need to memorize. So what were the definitions? The definitions in terms of pressure were one atmosphere is defined as 760 millimeters of mercury. That one you need to, I'm sorry? 29.92 is not by definition. Because 29.92 is not exact. We did this calculation and it came out to 29.92 dot 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 dot. It's not exact. I only want the ones that are exact that you memorize. So you don't have to do that one. Uh huh. How long do your exams usually take? Normally I give most of the period, uh, up to two hours, but a lot of people finish early. A lot of people finish you know, at the end. I give enough time to double check your answers. This is different because at, um, when I was a student, I, I never had time to double check my answers. I only had time to do it once. When I was there. <laughs> so we're gonna like have two hours to take the test and come back to do the lab. No, we aren't doing a lab. Um, like finishing the lab. We're finishing the lab at the beginning, um, and then we're gonna take the test because then some people can leave early if they want. You know. And other people can stay until the end. The questions are, will be the same as on the on the old exam posted. Same number of questions. Same format. Just different questions. So questions might look similar, but they're different. Or they might, you know, maybe I'll throw in the same questions. Just read the questions carefully. Okay. What else? Uh, So do you know all the definitions? You should know the definitions. And those are the ones that you should know. 
There aren't that many, though, so you don't really have to worry too much. Now, do, you, do I want you to memorize this equation? <laughs> Um, do I want you to memorize that? <coughs> yeah, you should have this one memorized or you should be able to derive it. How about this equation? Yeah. You should have this one memorized. The combined gas law. The density of water you should have memorized, but that's not exact. The density of water you should have memorized to two sig figs. Because it's easy to memorize. What is it? 1.0. <laughs> All right, if there are no other questions, are there any other questions? Uh huh. Yeah, can you bring a Scantron? The, yeah, the green one, the thin one. Uh huh. All right. But the question is, uh, all right, you should know two two names, three names. What, what are the names? Lavoisier, um, not really. Dalton, yes. J.J. Thompson, because J.J. Thompson did what? Electron. Electron. And then you should know Rutherford, because he did what? Not the proton because he did the other one. He did two. The proton's important, but I don't expect you to know the proton. I expect you to know the gold foil experiment. No. Question is, did J.J. Thompson determine the nuclear atom model? No, he didn't. Who determined the nuclear atom model? Rutherford, and what experiment did he use to determine the nuclear atom model? Yeah, the gold, the alpha particles. You don't know, have to know all the, the, the gritty details of that, but you know the name. All right, those are some important names, and uh, those names are associated with those particular experiments and discoveries. You should remember those. All right, other questions? No? All right, so if we go to sulfur, uh, let's take a look at sulfur. How many isotopes are there for sulfur? I don't know. I have to look up in the CRC Handbook of Chemistry and Physics, and then I find it in one of the tables there. It's called the table of isotopes. And I see how many isotopes are there? Four. And they range from 32 to 36. The mass numbers do, and the masses range from about 32 to about 36. It looks like the average is going to be very close to what? The average should be very close to 31. 32 because, you know, this is close to 32. Because it's 95%. And so we do the same procedure here that we do for all of them, except now we have more than two isotopes. And so when we do this, um, we have to do each one. So we get the decimal abundance times the mass of isotope 1. The decimal abundance times the mass of isotope 2, decimal abundance times the mass of isotope 3, and 4. And then um, we, we do it this way because we'd like to line it up according to sig figs or 32 decimal places. And so the question is, how many sig figs are in my final answer? I don't know, but I do know how many decimal places, and it's going to be two, two, two decimal places. And so whatever sig figs that yields, that's how many I'm allowed. And so I have that, and then I got to round this to 32.07. That would be the correct answer. 32.07. What's the density of water? What? You don't need to know that, but if, is it less than water or greater than water? Do you think it's like a hundred times less than water? Well, yeah, it's about like half of half its density of water. And so balsa wood is like 0 0.3, 0 0.4. You know, pine is 0 0.6. Uh, 
Point five, okay. Yeah. Point five, and then oak is higher. Uh -huh. and, uh, that's but you don't need to know. You just need to know is it less than or greater than? And how much? Like gold, gold is yeah, like twenty times heavier, so it's going to sink rapidly. That's that's why you need it. Whereas aluminum is only like three times heavier, so it doesn't sink as rapidly. All right, there's a sick figure here. Um, you know, this is, this is what, what I mean. But if this is the answer, is that the correct answer? You know, this book, this book drives me crazy because they always round the answer, but here they didn't round the answer. This is their final answer. The final answer is? Yeah, it's incorrect. The final answer is incorrect. And not only that, <laughs> take a look at this calculation. Is this calculation correct? No. And so when you, when you look at answer keys and answer books, you want to understand the problem enough so you can say, hey, that's wrong. Hey, this is wrong, right? That's how you check your answers because you, you're confident enough in the rules, in the setup, in whatever to say this is wrong. Why is this wrong? How many sig figs is multiplication allowed? This is how many sig figs? Two. Two. So we should only have two sig figs, which gives us two decimals. So it's not going to change it here. Right, but we're only allowed two decimal places, but certain digits two decimal places. So it should be 32.07? It should be 32.07. All right, um, anyway, we came up with this. You know what this is? This is the periodic table. Everybody knows what the periodic table tells us. I mean, where, what it is, but where did it come from? This periodic table was developed because of... Well, what are we trying to understand? So we got the composition, we got the structure. What are we missing? We, if we have the composition, we have the structure, we're missing the composition, structure, and properties. We need the properties. And so what we need to do is we need to correlate the composition and structure with the property. So if it has this structure, it has this composition, it has this property. And so this is the correlation here. The correlation is that this is grouped into properties. You know, um, if we look at a column, all members of the column have similar chemical properties. And as we go across, this is called a period, as we go across a row, these are families, columns, rows, or periods. As we go across a period, the uh, chemical properties vary smoothly. And so what are the chemical properties? Roughly, these are all metals here. These are what we call non-metals. Non-metals have different characteristics. These are some where in between metals and non-metals. So these are some of the properties. Now, how do we correlate it? So for example, here, if we look at um, hydrogen, is, um, well, let's look at beryllium. Beryllium is four, and so magnesium is similar in properties, but why is four and 12 similar? Is there a pattern there? Four, 12, 20, 38, 56, 88. Do you see a number pattern? Or is there a pattern here? 11, 19, 30, yeah, maybe there is. There's a number pattern there. Is there a pattern this way? So what we're doing is we're trying to look for, this is our data, we're trying to look for patterns in the data based on chemical, properties, you know, how things behave. And so um, that's the origin of the periodic table. So, so looking at this, why the heck would um, this happen? Like, for example, why would um, one proton not be more similar to two protons? One proton is more similar to having three protons than two protons. Why is that? Or why is it that, you know, when we go here with um, fluorine, fluorine is super reactive. Fluorine has how many protons? Nine protons. Yet neon, is it super reactive? No, neon is super stable. These are like total polar opposites because fluorine is crazy reactive, neon is crazy stable. Yet the only difference is nine <laughs> protons to ten protons. So why is that? You know? The same thing happens with chlorine. Chlorine, 17 protons, crazy reactive. Argon is crazy stable at 18. And so what, what we can conclude here is, do you see a pattern? Can you make a prediction? Okay, without looking at the periodic table, 
If I had 19 protons, how is it going to behave? If I have 54 protons, how will it behave? Stable, super stable, super reactive, or somewhere in between? No, without looking at the periodic table, could you predict it? Yeah, I guess you could add it. Okay. But okay, then why is it that 53 protons versus 54 protons gives so much difference in reactivity? Is the theory enough? Can you tell me? Is a theory what is a theory supposed to do? A theory is supposed to be a fundamental explanation. Is this a fundamental explanation? The number of protons, the nuclear atom, Rutherford? Can I use Rutherford's model to tell me why 53 and 54 protons behave so differently? No. And so the theory is not enough right now. This is not enough. We need a, a more detailed picture of what's happening in the atom. And that more detailed picture isn't coming for a while because that more detailed picture is, is quantum mechanics, which we're going to talk about later on in chapter 9 or something like that. And so, uh, so for right now, you look at that pattern and you go, that's crazy. I, I can't predict that. Could you have predicted this? No. This is just straight observation. So we got this pattern. We've got to figure out what's going on with this pattern. But now that we got this pattern, let's see if we can do some stuff. You know, we already talked about this. The atomic mass, is, is that the isotopic mass or is that the average atomic mass? It's average. That's the average. Okay, then we have periods, which are the uh, rows, horizontal rows. We have groups, which are the columns. These are the families. And then we have the main group elements. The main group, um, and we have the transition elements. Let me talk about that. We have the metals, we have the non-metals, we have the metalloids. And so here, uh, this is what we're going to do. These are some of the... Um, symbols you have to memorize and the names you have to memorize. This is the end of chapter 5, but I'm not going to test you on this. This is a bit much for this. And so it's not going to include all of chapter 5. If you look at the, the exam, the practice exam, it didn't include all of chapter 5. Maybe I'll do the same thing since I'm running out of time here. But uh, let's take a look at the periodic table and then just uh, look at the parts of the periodic table here. All right, the main group are the first two columns and these columns over here. This blue group is called the transition metal, so the transition elements. So this is different. So we have the main group and then the transition metals, and these are called the rare earth or the, uh, the lanthanides and the actinides based on this. And these are separate here. Then most of these on the left are metals. And then on the right, we have the non-metals and the metalloids, and the semi-metals are the border region. The border region is this green ladder here. All right, that's it for chapter five. Just a brief breakdown of that. And so let's take a look at the uh, homework for chapter five and see what that looks like. All right, what questions did I assign from chapter five homework? Oh. Okay, one. One through 11 on. One through 11 on. All right, uh-huh, question? One did what? The density of what? You don't need to know the density of what. You, what you do know, need to know is it's less than or greater than water. Is it less than or greater? Did I ask you for the density of wood on the test? Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at that, that question here and then see how you can answer it without having to know the density of wood. What question was it? Uh, 36. <coughs> okay, so is the density of wood the same as water? Okay, is it less than water or greater than water? Okay, so B is eliminated and D is eliminated. Is it a little bit less than water or a thousand times less than water? A little bit. And so the answer is A. So the density of wood is A here. 
that's that's the way. So you would know dense. This would be the density, if not wood. This would be the density of a gas. Gases are a thousand times less than dense than water. So, uh huh. Yes, uh, that was a typo. Um, yeah, 27, the correct answers uh, weren't there. That was a mistake on my part. And 20, also. Uh, what was it, 20? 20 is OK. 28? Yeah, this was supposed to be true or false. 28 is supposed to be true or false. Yeah, you can write a note on the side. Well, you're not the only one. The people who have taken the exam last semester found those as well. And so I fixed it. Sorry, did that. All right, today's an early day, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, tomorrow uh, is Wednesday, so tomorrow we'll go through the uh, homework and the test. <laughs> but anyway, try the sample test, you know, um, and then, you know, I, I'd like to talk about it when um, everybody's tried it.